Today, I propose the question, can normal everyday people tell the difference between images of real human beings versus images of imaginary people created entirely by artificial intelligence? You think it's real? Yeah, I mean, the beard and the skin flaws. I think look this one's AI. I'll say real. That says AI. There's no like confidence. This is what I expect AI dating apps to show. Don't contact that person because it's a scam. She looks real to me. It's hard for me to describe AI. <laughs> this is getting rough. This is Natalie Portman. Oh man, okay, real. AI, dude, what? Real? No, this is harder than I thought. I don't know, but he's cute. <laughs> what you are about to see, I didn't think AI was this good yet. By now, everyone has heard the warnings on how AI is going to disrupt our entire way of life. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. Can I ask you this, and you finish the sentence. We have created a what? We've created our next master. We have created uh, our salvation or destruction. You believe that chat GPT-4 understands? I believe it definitely understands, yes. And in five years' time? I think in five years' time, it may well be able to reason better than us. I've been a professional photographer for 20 years now, and while everyone is making a huge deal out of AI text and chat, I'm actually way more worried about the images coming out of AI software. Last year, most of the images created with AI look like cartoons, but today they look almost indistinguishable from real photographs. Software like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and Dolly have made it easier than ever to create realistic and compelling images in just seconds. Just this week, Meta, the company previously known as Facebook, added the Meta AI bot to their texting platform, WhatsApp. And now your friends and unsolicited scam artists can send you AI-created images easier than ever. This technology is moving extremely rapidly, and I don't think the general public has any idea how fast AI is creating these hyper-realistic looking images, but surely this is only going to fool the most gullible and naive people in the world, right? Now, I currently live in this crazy community down here in Puerto Rico that is filled with some of the most educated and well-traveled people I have ever met in my life. We're talking about entrepreneurs, marketers, investors, YouTubers, CEOs of companies that you've probably heard of and I thought it would be interesting to see if some of the smartest people that I know can tell the difference between photography of real human beings and fake images created entirely from word prompts using artificial intelligence. Now, if you wanna take this test for yourself, I urge you to stop this video right now and go to the link in the description below. Give yourself just five seconds per image and see just how discerning your own eye is in spotting AI-generated images. I think you're gonna find this test a lot harder than you would think. When you come back to this video, stay tuned because at the end, I let an AI bot run this same test to see how well AI can identify each of these images. So now let's look at the results and see how the participants in my test group here in my community did on this test. This Dude. one looks fabricated, Joel. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one's too touched up. It's oh. a real headshot. This is coming from a professional wedding and portrait photographer and I already feel like I'm gonna screw this up. The eyes and the face are kind of like off. It's a real headshot. <laughs> This is going to be impossible, I feel like. I'll say real. You are 100% wrong now, eight images in. This guy's neck is the same size of his head, AI. Real. All right, her neck is way too long. Come on now, this is AI. Real. <laughs> Jeez. I'm totally insulting these people. Do you want to know that I'm starting to sweat at this point? Is that important? <laughs> the way I would describe this one is I think it's AI and it's almost like I feel that AI is trying too hard to be real. Like with the rough skin, real. That's gotta be real. It's AI. Oh, that's surprising. Okay. Mm, real. No, no, no. In order to run this test, I created over a hundred AI generated headshots through open source software called Stable Diffusion. Now, unlike other AI software that maybe you've used that prohibits creating nudity or deep fakes of celebrities, 
Stable Diffusion is an open source AI algorithm that is built around a community that allows users to create absolutely anything that they want 100% unrestricted. Yeah, it's kind of scary to be honest. So this video is sponsored by the photo printing website Sal Digital. To run this test, I printed over 100 images of real people from real photographers and 100 images that I created using AI. I then printed these as four by six photographs through Sal Digital's website, and I printed these on matte paper to prevent fingerprints from showing up as multiple people handled the images. The image quality of these prints from Sal Digital is outstanding, and so while there may be some strange artifacts created from Stable Diffusion, every image is printed on the exact same museum quality archival photo paper, so regardless of what people think of the images themselves, the quality of the prints are at the highest standard. As a photographer, of course, I urge everyone to go out there and start printing more of their memories, more of their artwork, and putting it up on your wall. If you want to give Sal Digital a try and print some of your own images, I have a special link in the description below. So, how did everyone fare on this test? Well, the results are pretty surprising. Out of the 20 people who took the test right here in the studio, only a few outliers were really able to consistently pick out the AI images from the real photographs. Only two had a success rate of 80% on this test, and many people actually scored around 30%, which means they were better off completely guessing which image was real versus AI. Let's stop and think about that for a second. They literally would have been better off flipping a coin and not even looking at the images. If you were to just ask me before I did this, how, what percentage of these do you think you're gonna get right? I have enough knowledge to know that I would've got some wrong, but I would've thought that I was gonna get 75% of them right. I think, yeah, I think I'll pass. Maybe not like perfect, but I think I'll, I think I'll get a passing grade. Every single picture was, looked real to me. I thought that would be a lot easier. I don't think I did well. Now I kept tally of all this, and when I averaged all of the correctly identified images against the total number of images shown, my test group was only able to identify images created with AI 61% of the time. 39% of the time, they were completely fooled into believing that what they saw was a real human being. And what's even more wild is a lot like many of you are probably thinking who are watching this video, they thought for certain that they would be able to pick out the real and fake images fairly easily. In fact, many of the participants were kind of excited to tell me that they have been using some form of AI on a daily basis in their own businesses today. That is not a good look. They're using this technology and they're still getting fooled 40% of the time. Before I wrapped up this little social experiment, I thought maybe this is just a generational thing. So I ran the same AI test on a bunch of high schoolers. I think maybe I will do better than adults as I will be able to see and find the tiny details that would give it away. I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna say that she's real. Let's see. Man, my first one that I got wrong. AI. AI. Although this test group was much smaller than my adult group, the high schoolers, they performed about 14% better and were able to pick out AI-generated images about 75% of the time compared to the adults who just got 61% of the images correct. Now she is beautiful, but I do not believe that she is real. Something is definitely wrong here, but I'm not sure if I can blame AI for this. It's real. Nope. Will these students grow up to be more or less immune to the tidal wave of AI imagery headed our way? Well, that's yet to be determined. So how did my AI program do in identifying each image? It wasn't perfect, but it scored 90% accuracy, and that's without ever being trained for this task. That is pretty incredible. So after seeing how good these images are, we have to ask ourselves, what does this mean for the world of photography, filmmaking, creatives, designers, architects, lawyers? Anybody who has a job where AI can step in and do it better, we have to think like, are these jobs gonna stick around? Is our work gonna become obsolete and not as good as what the AI can produce at a fraction of the price? Maybe no price at all? Because very soon in the not so far future, we're gonna be able to do this exact same experiment using research papers or law documents or architectural designs or who knows, anything that can be sourced from the internet, compiled, and built into something using AI, I think everyone needs to be on their toes and extremely concerned about this. And I hope that this little video using photography as an example really opens your mind up to see how disruptive this is. I now know 
that I cannot believe what I can't see right before me. And even then, who the heck knows? That's, it's really interesting, man. It's, this is a year into the making of this thing. So while this is all pretty exciting and revolutionary, I think you'd be pretty foolish not to think that at some point, perhaps even I could be replaced uh, with some sort of AI avatar. How are you down? This is crazy. How long has this been running? Computer on? Cameras on?